Morning my friends from somewhere in France where I'm I'm stuck. I'm stuck to get a new passport since quite some time. But I will let you guess, try to guess where I am exactly in France. I am in a quite a beautiful place. Let's see if some people can find find out where am I. So my plan in this video is to take you through um, on a beautiful hike here in France and at the same time tell you the story which is quite an inter interesting story the story of how I got out of Ethiopia without passport and without all the papers <laughs> required to exit the country So, where am I? I am deep in the bush, 250 kilometers from Jinka, 250 kilometers of dirt road. We've just been robbed and we are, we have the car and nothing else. And now the goal is to go back to France. So, we, of course, we still have the car. So we rode, we rode, or we drove all the way to, to the next uh, village. And uh, then we went to the police where well, the guide and, uh, and my, uh, my guide and my driver uh, drove us to the police station. We told them we were robbed and that. I was still shocked, so I was like kind of not really figuring out what's, what's going on. So I just didn't do anything. They just declared what, uh, what each of us got robbed, how much money, all the, all the equipment we got robbed. And, uh, and I forgot actually I had no more papers, I had no more passports or no more visa to travel inside the country, but I forgot to ask to the police for the correct paper to be able to travel inside the country legally if the police stops me and, and asks me for my papers. So then we drove back all the way to Jinka and the following day I remembered I needed that to travel. So first thing you need, first chapter on, on the way to the way back to France without papers. You need to get, if you want to travel, when, you, when you're robbed abroad and you lose your passport, you need to first get a police report. So in Jinka, I was not in the same area anymore. So at first, uh, the police refused to give me the paper, but uh, I was with my guide. I went to the police station with my guide, who was very helpful, because they say the, the place where I was robbed depended on another police station. So I had to go to the other police station, but the other police station was like maybe Maybe I was one day and a half uh, away by car, so <laughs> what's the point? I had no paper, I needed some papers to travel. So in the end, okay, they finally, after a bit of discussion, they finally uh, agreed on uh, making the report that I don't have with me, I will show it to you. They finally agreed to do the report that will allow me to travel inside Ethiopia. So thanks to this report, I could take a bus back from Jinka to Arba Minj, where I left my bike uh, and then I could take a bus from Arba Minj to Addis and, and it was some roadblock so I really needed this paper because these areas are a little bit troubled uh, well like in many places in Ethiopia right now so these areas are troubled so at some checkpoints they asked for my papers and I had to I had to show them the paper where well, I don't have a passport anymore because because I got robbed by uh, guys with a uh, AK-47 uh, but it was very easy, they, they did not uh, bother me, bother me at all. Bonjour. Bonjour. Wow, oh my god. Look at, wow, look at these trees, guys. Awesome, and this landscape. Woo. This place is awesome. Okay, so first, the police report, which was easy to get. Second paper to get, to be able to travel without passport in the situation I was. So I had to go to, to the embassy, French embassy in Addis Ababa, and I needed to ask for a laissez-passer, which is the paper that kind of replaces your passport, but it's just a one-time paper that allows you to travel back to your country. So I bought a plane ticket, and one day before flying, I went to the embassy to get my uh, laissez-passer. I had the list of papers, I brought everything. It was very easy. Just one thing was annoying, is that a French laissez-passer costs 
30 euros uh, <laughs> but because we are in Ethiopia you have to pay in local money uh, because when I went to the embassy I asked them can I pay in euro because if I paid in euro it was not the same price so the official price is 30 euros everywhere in the world and when you are in, a, in an embassy, in a French embassy, or whichever embassy, you are in the, in the country of the embassy, actually. So when, you are, when I am in the French embassy, I am in France, actually. I'm not in Ethiopia anymore. But still, the Ethiopian government was uh, forcing... <laughs> it's quite insane. It was forcing the, the French embassy to make you pay with local money. But then the problem is, because the currency exchange rate is fake, then Suddenly, in spite of being 30 euros, it's, it became 55 euros. Well, it's, it's not a big deal, but it's still, I think it's, it's a great shame that uh, the government allows itself to just steal people just like that, just because they are in the government and they can, and they can do it. It's really a shame, anyway. So, laissez passer, and, uh, and then I thought I was good to go. But actually, in the embassy, they told me that once some, someone who had a laissez passer like that, they did not let uh, at the immigration at the airport of Addis Ababa, they did not let uh, the person out. So they told me I actually need to go to the foreign affairs or the immigration office of the Ethiopian government to get an exit visa. I had no idea about that. Very glad the embassy told me. So I thought, okay, luckily I still have one day because the following day I was flying very late at night. Luckily I still have one day and the next goal to be able to travel without passport is going to be to get an Ethiopian exit visa and I forgot to say so of course as a, as a proof of identity I was lucky well it's not luck but I had left my uh, ID in the hotel uh, far away from, uh, from the tribe so I still have my ID, my French ID. That's why it was uh, it was easy to prove my identity identity because uh, the ID is uh, biometric as well. So you can be sure you are French. And uh, and the list of papers, of course, uh, I found it on the inter on the internet uh, on the on the on the French government website. It's very easy to to see what what papers you need in the situation. Just look on your government's website. Uh, to get a laissez passer. Will I go to swim? I don't know. The river is surely icy cold. And the cliff is awesome. You see someone is uh, is daring to swim. Hoppala. So, third step, the exit visa. So now I have to deal, now it's the day of my flight. My flight is at midnight. So at the end of the day, and I need to get an exit visa before the end of the day. So early in the morning, I go to the immigration office near uh, Arad Kilo, that uh, was indicated to me by the, by the French embassy. the beauty wow this part is awesome this part of the hike yeah so immigration so then I arrive there is a there is an information desk I explain my situation they tell me okay got you the visa thing so I go somewhere else where they make photocopies they make some photocopies of my ID and they drive me to they give me a paper to fill for a visa I ask but I want a, I don't want a normal visa I, I say I want an exit visa they say just visa. Okay. So then you have to queue. You sit on chairs and you queue on the chairs to go to, to one desk, to one window. But uh, as I approach the window, it's a lunch break already because I waited a long time. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how somehow because yeah, maybe I did not leave that early anyway. I thought it was going to take just a couple of hours. So I left at nine o'clock from my hotel, 
which was far, very far, which was near the airport in Bolly Road uh, to Arad Kilo. I arrived there at 10 o'clock and by the time I get to try to apply for the exit visa, it's lunch time. So I go to have a salad in the same shop where I, where I had the incident with, the, with, with someone, which is actually the reason why I was not filming on this process, because filming in Addis is absolutely horrible. People, I don't know what they like. Wow. So many people just completely freak out when they see a camera. So I thought, okay, better not to film if I need something from the government. Better not to try uh, to do anything uh, disturbing. So I go to have lunch there. When I come back, beginning of the afternoon at 1.30, they resume to work after an hour and a half of lunch break and the window opens again. So then I thought, okay, I will be able to deal with that. So then I passed the first window. I don't know, they write some things on my, on some of the papers I brought. And I go inside another office with a lot of, a lot of desks and the queue again, queue again on the chairs. So you sit on a the chair, there are like maybe 10 or 50, maybe 20 chairs side by side. And the one on the at the left is uh, is the the first in the queue, and so when the when everybody moves chair when you when someone reaches a desk basically. Wait, there's a difficult passage. Oh. Ah. Yeah. So finally, after I don't know some time, I reached reach desk, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna be able to after maybe already three, three hours in the, in the office, immigration office, maybe I'm gonna get an exit visa now. I explain my situation and that, and the guy says, well, the person says, well, you don't have to deal with me, go to see the boss there at the end of the room. So I go to see the boss, I explain my situation, and she tells me, well, I can't do the visa for you, she writes something on my uh, on one of my papers and she tells me now I have to go to the older to the old immigration office somewhere else in Addis so I'm like what the hell <laughs> oh it's beautiful so I'm like what the hell look at that what the hell yes yeah, so I'm like what the hell and where is this other immigration office she tells me it's in Piazza, somewhere near something, I, which I don't know. So I know where is Piazza, but Piazza is quite big. So, so I ask her, where, where, where is the office? Can you tell me where is the office? And she's like, really, really not nice, not willing to talk. She really shows me that she's bothered because I'm asking questions. So, okay, so I thought, okay, she's the boss. I'm not going to piss her off. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try to ask someone else. So I say, okay, I will go to the other immigration office. Then I go out, I ask two different desks. Nobody wants to answer my questions, basically. They just don't want to talk to me. It's like, welcome in the Baroque, in the nightmare of bureaucracy. Very nice. So then I thought, okay, I'll go to the entrance and ask the, the security there. Maybe you know, nobody talks to them. Maybe they will be willing. Ooh, look at these stairs. Yeah, maybe they will be willing to explain to me where is this other immigration office? Because they, uh, they... What a place, man. What a place. So I go to the security and I ask them where is the immigration office? And they do one of the things I love the most in Africa. One of the things that actually pisses me off the most. They tell me just take a taxi. I'm like, no, I don't want to take a taxi. I mean, Piazza is not far from here. There's maybe 20 minutes walking. I want to go walking. So can you tell me where it is? They just tell me, no, just take a taxi. And, and, and then I try to ask again and again, and no, there's no way they're going to tell me anything. And uh, no, they just refuse to, to help me. And, and, and I hate when they, wow. When, when they see you, and, and they see your skin, basically. They see your white skin and they think, okay, he's white, he's rich. Can you can take a taxi. We don't need to explain to bother explaining to you. So it's just like, I don't know, it just pisses me off. So then I decided, okay, I'm not going to take a taxi. 
I'm gonna walk. So I walked. They, they, they gave me a direction basically. They take me down the road and then right. And then I asked, right? Yes, right. But it was much com more complicated than that. But then I asked at every corner, I asked someone basically. And in the end, after half an hour walk, I managed to reach the other immigration office. And the other immigration office is huge. It's much, much bigger than the, uh, than the first one. I think it's the one for the locals or I don't know for, for who. The, the previous one was just for the, for the foreigners, for the visas, for the visa extensions, I think. And there is a huge queue, like a, like a three days queue in front of the office with a big melee, with a big pack of people almost fighting to try to get through the door. So I think, okay, obviously I have my flight tonight. Now it's already maybe two o'clock or like half past two. Well, it was already getting a bit late. Look at that, guys. And I had no idea when I could get this, this uh, exit visa. So I thought, okay, I need to go where all the people fight and try to enter to enter the, the, the office, the immigration office from there, because I, there is no way I can do the queue. If I queue, I will not get my visa for tonight. So I go in the melee, people are fighting. I try to push a little bit, like everybody's pushing, everybody's trying to, they all, everybody's in a rush, basically, I guess. Everybody's like me, like, I need to do some papers now, but uh, why don't you let me in? So I managed to approach a cop and I show him my paper where the boss in the first office uh, wrote a small, uh, some words in, uh, in Amharic, uh, which I can't read, of course. He reads this and he just like, okay, doesn't matter. He just goes away. So I can't go inside. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? This is begin beginning to be quite tricky. So I wait, I keep pushing. There is a woman nearby who starts to, what the hell? There are two tracks. Uh, wait. So yeah, so there is a woman nearby who starts yelling at me like she, I kind of kind of understand what she's what she's yelling in Amharic. She's saying like this foreigner he has to queue like everybody. She's like looking at me very aggressively. So I really feel very very welcome and in a very good situation to be able to exit the country on on time. Yeah, so I'm keep I stay in the in the fight trying to approach the gate basically. I try to show my paper to other cops. They don't even look at it. They don't care. At some point, one of the cops, because the fight is, is getting a bit too... There are too many people pushing to try to get inside. One of the cops starts uh, hitting the people with his stick. And I'm like, what the hell? And I almost almost get hit by, by at some point. He stops just before hitting me, just after hitting a, a local guy. He thought it's probably not so wise to, to start hitting a, a foreigner. Anyway. Luckily, I escaped being, being beaten up by, by the cops. I still stay in the melee. And after a few minutes, finally, the cop to whom I showed uh, my, uh, my uh, well, I need to check the track also, to whom I showed my paper with the word of the boss of the first office. He, he makes a sign to another cop and he tells him, let him in. So finally I managed to get in inside the immigration office after maybe, I don't know, 15-20 minutes fight. Wow, that was a big, big step. And that was a hard step. And as I go through the gate, there's this woman shouting, Eh, the foreigner is cheated. He cut the queue. Doesn't matter. I need my paper for tonight. And actually later on I will find out that I, I did not cut the queue because I was not waiting for the same windows as the others. Nobody was going to, this, to the windows I wanted to see. So I did not cut the queue, I just managed to, don't do, to not do the queue that I was not supposed to do. But that was hard. So I go inside and she wrote, I don't know, window 16 or 17. So I go there. They say, no, it's not here. Go to window 33. So I spent like five minutes looking around all the compound. It's like, where is the window 33? 
what the hell everybody seems not friendly so really hard to ask someone but finally I go inside the building and I found 30, 31, yeah 33 oh shit it's closed the window's closed so I go to the window next door and I say why I need to go to 33 but it's closed they tell me wait oh my god this is an absolute nightmare five minutes later the guys of the window 32 to whom I talked already tell me oh, you can go to the to the window 31 now they will do it for you so they check my papers they check my story and they write another word on my small piece of paper and they tell me window 39 I don't know random numbers so I go to window 39 and then they ask me then they ask me for all my papers and I thought okay I'm gonna get my visa now I'm having hope again oh my god maybe I will make it tonight maybe I will make it to the plane 39 I wait, I wait. They have all my papers, they check everything. And basically, at this office, what they were doing is they were checking whether I, I really entered the country properly or not. They find me on their database of like people who entered with a biometric passport. So they found me, but still I don't get the visa. So they write another, another word, another few, another few sentences on my piece of paper. <laughs> and they tell me, now go back to the first office so I'm like what the hell this is endless so I walk back 20 minutes walk back uphill this time the, the walk first walk was downhill oh my god guys this is absolutely gorgeous so I walk back up to the first immigration office I wait for the first window then I managed to talk to the guy and he tells me okay you have to go inside okay back in the office on the chairs so I wait again for like 15 minutes chair by chair once I reach the last chair finally one desk calls me I arrive there and they tell me okay you're ready for the visa hey, when do you want to leave I say I leave today they look at me like you leave today no that's not possible I say yeah my flight is tonight so I, I leave today and I just want an exit visa I say and they are like no okay I, I i can't do that to go wait again on the chairs so i'm like what the okay <laughs> so i go wait again on the chairs hey 15 minutes again chair by chair and i reach another desk and they ask me again what do, what do you want so let's do they look at my papers do the visa okay very good when do you want to leave i want to leave tonight i won't just want an exit visa look i was robbed I have this i have my laissez passer I want an exit visa, I want to be allowed out of the country. That tells me, well, that's, that's another person. So, and she tells me, well, the, the, a visa takes three days to, to do, so to deliver. So you can't leave tonight. I say, no, I have a plane tonight. I'm, I'm leaving tonight. I need a visa today. No, it takes three days. So they tell me, okay, go see the boss. So I'm like, what the hell? What the hell is this nightmare? So I go to see the boss, explain my situation again, and I tell her I need to leave tonight. And she tells me, no, it takes three days to get a visa. You'll have to postpone your flight. And I'm like, what the hell? This is an absolute nightmare. <sighs> Let's go down there. I'll go down there to, to, have, a, to have lunch and, uh, and tell you the end of the, of the story. <sighs> oh, but, uh, Okay, so I'm still at this at the, at the desk of this very not friendly boss at the immigration office and I explained her a bit more thoroughly what's my situation. I got robbed at gunpoint by a tribe with AK 47s and I had to hand them my passport. My flight is tonight and I don't need and, and this application you gave me is an application for a normal visa extension I don't care I don't want a normal visa extension I just want I just want an exit visa and she tells me like oh you got robbed at, uh, by guys with AK-47s wow wow 
yeah, but the visa still takes three days. I'm like, what the hell? So being nice and, and explaining the real situation did not work. So I think, okay, let's try, let's try another strategy, <clears throat> which is, I am getting really pissed, basically. I think I need whatever it takes. I will get into this plane. That's my mindset. I'm like, now I'm like, I don't care of anything. I just want to get in the plane. Look at this beautiful place, guys. So whatever it takes, I need to get into this freaking plane. So I start shouting, basically. I lose my temper, I start shouting. I know it's... It's something not good to do, but it's the only way like, to make her understand I am in big trouble, I need to get out. So I start shouting, like, don't you see, I mean, it's an emergency. It's like, I freaking need to get in this plane, I need to get, I just want to get out of Ethiopia, that's all. She, says, she tells me, like, stop shouting, stop shouting, we don't shout. Am I shouting? She says, don't shout, don't shout. But it, but it works still, she's not happy, but it worked. Because then she understands that I'm, I'm, it's really an emergency. But she still says, yeah, I understand, it's an emergency, but I, I don't see what I can do. So then I explain her. And then I, I, I think, I think I'm still at the desk. Still very angry, okay, I thought, okay, the, the shouting made me go a step forward, but not enough to, to, get, to get a paper. And then I realize that on my laissez passe, because my flight is from Addis to Rome and then Rome to, to Marseille. And then I think, oh, on my laissez passer Rome is mentioned on my laissez passer So I think if I do what she says, which is to try to change my flight, my laissez passer will not be valid anymore because my stopover in Rome is written on my laissez passer So then I tell her that and I tell her, so what's, what's going to happen? Because if I do what you tell me, which is to, to first I'm going to lose my flight, they're not going to reimburse me. And then my lesson pass is not going to be valid anymore because most likely I'm not going to have the exact same flight. I'm going to have a stopover somewhere else. And my lesson pass mentions Rome on the paper. So it's not going to be valid anymore. So what do I do? I, I have this lesson pass to do an exit visa. But then when I get the exit visa, my lesson pass is not valid again. So I need to do another lesson pass. And then because I changed lesson pass, my exit visa is not valid again. So I have to do another exit visa. So what the hell? I need, to, I just, this is not going to work. I need to exit Ethiopia. That's all. Just let me out. Uh, and I think she does. She, and then I realize I found the right, the right uh, argumentation, the right explanation. And she says, yeah, okay, okay. It does make sense. So she says, I'm going to see what I can do for you. <sighs> Finally, I'm progressing. So she tells me I'm going to call my boss and I'm going to see what I can do for you, basically. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, hopefully it works. Because I don't want to lose my, I mean, I got robbed so much money already. I don't want to lose the flight ticket again and have to do another laissez passe and all that. And lose more, and lose more time again. And I just want to get out and start, and, and start progressing into my way back into, into the journey. To have, at first at least apply for a new passport in France. So she calls her boss. And she's friendly now, you know, she was the same boss as uh, who, 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 to whom I saw in the beginning, who was very not friendly, very rude. Now she's friendly, she understands. I, I, I really had a big, a big bad situation with robbed by three guys with AK, well, six guys, three with AK-47s. So it was a, a big, big uh, armed robbery. So now she's friendly. She calls her boss and okay, she said, okay, my boss is okay to let you out. Now I need to call the boss of the immigration of the uh, airport, the Bola International Airport of Addis Ababa, uh, and see if he, uh, he, if he will agree to let you out. So she calls the boss at the airport, and yeah, she talks, and yeah, he agrees. So the agreement, the deal is that in the airport, I can't get a visa, so I can't get any official paper to allow me out. But in the airport, the boss of the immigration knows I will come Tonight, he knows what time is my flight, which is my flight, and he knows the immigration has to have to let me through. I just have to pay fifty dollars uh, at the immigration, and they will let me through. And she writes a sentence of my small paper in red in Amharic, and that's it. And I'm so happy I don't, 
ask for anything because she says I'm okay now. I'm, I'm, I will be allowed out. I will be allowed to exit the country. So I just say, okay, I'm very happy. I say, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm so happy I go out and, uh, and I think I'm good. So that's how I managed to get a verbal, half written, half verbal agreement to get out of the country. I did not get the exit visa, but I got a verbal agreement. So that was the end of the, of the first step of my uh, journey <laughs> to travel internationally without passports. Get down here. C'est moi, ouais. Je regardais. Et tombé. Ça va. C'est récupéré. quite cold eh? let's try to go on the other side hopefully they don't uh... why oh, it's very cold sometimes they release water on the hydroelectric power plant here hopefully they don't do it today ah uh, why wow, it's freaking cold wow okay so what do i have for my meal so i have a very very simple french meal i have a sandwich from the bakery so at least you see a little bit of food I have a sandwich for breakfast I had a oh shit I had a almond croissant that's I love it awesome eating in the bakeries is the best thing in France <laughs> it's not so expensive and it's very good you see a sandwich with a cornichon so with like um, pickles and rosette a kind of dry sausage kind of a French cured meat you see I don't know if there is butter inside I guess there is a bit of butter that's very good mmm fantastic and I also brought some camembert and some uh, goat cheese and some people are trying to cross to join me Mm. Very good camembert. Uh, cheese in France is awesome. Hop là. this gold cheese you see it has some um, moisture that's a good sign very good sign <laughs> that's the best mm. very good Yeah, my African journey is not over yet. So that's why I don't want to make videos in France because Africa, I'm still, I'm still standing. It's a little bit hard, but I'm still standing. The journey is not over. So I will do France after, after Africa or if Africa definitely beats me. Let's go back to the main, to the other side. You see how clear the water is beautiful, eh? Wow, oh my God. It's so freaking cold. Wow, it's freaking cold, eh? How do I... I need to go here. Oh, there, there are some stairs. Oh, c'est un escalier, ça? Je sais pas. Un parmi tant d'autres, Un parmi tant d'autres, ouais. On est descendu plus là-bas. Vous êtes descendu plus là-bas, ouais. Ça m'a l'air un peu glissant là quand même. Ouais. 
Euh... Vous êtes passé par là Ah oui, oui, oui. Ouais Ok. Ok, merci. Hop. Allez. Ok. I'm not, I'm not a great climber. So I'm a bit cautious. Merci. Bonjour. Where the hell is the way? Oh, that's where I, I, I talk to you. Okay, I think I found the way. Yes. Oh my God. What the hell is that, guys? Do you see these stairs? That's mental. I really don't like that. And in addition, I only have one hand. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, wow. It's hard not to have vertigo. Look at that. Oh, and they're so narrow also. The steps are so narrow. What the hell? Oh, look at that view, guys. Oh my God. And it continues. Look. That's definitely one of the most beautiful places in the world, I guess. Okay, so let's continue with the fourth step now to get in the plane. Managed to get in the plane without the passport, of course, and without the exit visa, because I didn't have visa, I just have a word, a small word, small sentence written in red on my paper. So I decided to go very early to the airport because I knew it was probably going to be complicated to, to go through the immigration because, because I have to make the people understand that, uh, uh, that I was allowed somehow by the chief of the immigration. I was uh, allowed to pass to go through just by a phone call. Anyway, so I arrived four hours before the flight. First thing, just to check in my bag, it takes me two hours and a half because <laughs> Because just when I was about to check in, they had a huge uh, blackout. Basically, all the computers of the airport were, were not working anymore. Well, the system to check in the bags was not working. So I lost like 45 minutes on this first. And then the checking the, check the bags without the passport. Very easy with my laissez passer. No problem at all. But I already lost an hour and a half queuing. So I only have two hours and a half before my flight to go through the immigration now. So after checking my, my bag successfully, I go to the immigration. I queue, I arrive there, I give all my papers, I show my laissez-passer, my French ID card, and my paper with the sentence in red from the boss of the immigration saying that I'm, I'm allowed to, to pass. It's all written in Amharic, I, so I can't read it because it's the case, it's the local alphabet, and I have no idea what it says, but I just saw that and I'm confident I will go through. And the guy, of course, is like, what, what the hell is that? He's, he calls someone else and sends me, and sends me away because he's like, I don't know how, how to deal with this. Uh, he sends me to, to the guy who does the security, basically before and before queuing. So I'm like, okay, it's not gonna be that easy. First attempt, it's a failure and I'm going backwards now. So, the guy of the entrance of the immigration. The guy who, to whom you ask questions. If you want to know, if you have questions before I go in to the actual window to get your passport stamped. So I tell him, the boss of the immigration knows I'm coming. Just contact him, he will tell you, I have to pay $50 and I can go through. And he says, yes, yes, but he doesn't do anything. So I tell him again, hey, the boss knows I'm here, he knows I take that slide, he knows my situation. He's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he puts me aside and he just forgets about me. So I'm like, woof, starting to piss me off. And uh, I'm losing time again. Will I make it in the plane? Ah, it's very stressful. 
very very stressful but you have to be highly motivated and then it's possible to make it but it's mostly in the head have to force people to let you through somehow I tell him again he doesn't care about me then at some point I insist I insist I talk louder and louder and he tells me yeah but you know this thing so he reads my paper with this little red sentence and he tells me yeah but you could have written this I mean who tells me that you say this is the boss of the immigration office in in Arvkilo who wrote this sentence that you could have written this and I say oh well I didn't think about that it's quite true I mean I can't read I can't write or read Amharic I don't know the alphabet but I absolutely cannot prove that so he's completely right I could have written that and I could be trying trying to cheat him so I'm like ah he got the point but that's not a good point in the right direction that's a point in the direction of missing my flight so I'm like yeah you're right I can't prove it but but still this is they was this was truly written by the boss of the immigration in Arad Kilo and the boss of the immigration here knows I'm, I'm here once again he puts me aside and wait and deals with other people oh my god what a place and I'm like okay I wait a little bit I don't want to be too annoying so I always leave him some space and then come back so it's been maybe like 15 20 minutes I'm waiting and every two three minutes I poke him I, hey man I need to I need to go through the immigration and always he like push me aside so every time I poke him I start speaking louder louder and louder but he deals with all the people and he keeps me aside and he's pissing me off so much and at some point and I, at some point I, I start I understand that actually he's waiting for me to give a phone call to the boss of the immigration so I can pass him the boss and he and the boss can tell him that's what I say is right but I don't have this the phone number of the boss of the immigration of the of the airport so I can't do that but at least I understood why I am stuck so finally after I don't know maybe I don't know how much time I lost there maybe half an hour maybe 45 minutes at some point I start once again shouting and once again it works and I tell I explain him I cannot call the boss I don't have his phone number you have to drive me to him I cannot drive you to the boss you have to get me to the boss to get me in contact with the boss because I tell you the boss knows I'm here so then he's like and I shout it's 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 sad because it's not nice to do that but that's the only way to get things done I mean I needed to go through the immigration at some point that was the only thing that mattered so I had to find a way to get through the immigration and not get rejected because someone was pushing me away with no reason so then he gets me to someone else who then takes my paper and calls the boss the person talks to the, the boss for like two minutes and then he tells me you're free to go just go to this window they will deal with you we are okay with the $50 and you can go out oh my god and I'm like oh it is I kind of I almost made I made it and then yeah I'm so freaking happy so so happy I I made it I made it oh my god it was so hard so then they send me some some a special person just for me they take care of my laissez passer and actually they deliver they, they deliver me a visa on the spot that they stick on the laissez passer and then I have to pay for the visa so the visa is $50 Hoppala, my legs are starting to feel weak Up. what do I do I give $50 and then the woman of the of the immigration who gave me the visa and talked dealt with with everything before she starts looking at my note for like five minutes 
she looks in every direction, she, she stretches the knot, she looks, she tastes, touches the thickness of the knot, everything. And after five minutes, she's like, no, this knot is fake. I don't accept it. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? I thought I was done and now I have another, <laughs> another situation now where I can't. <laughs> they don't let me through because they don't want my note. I'm like, what the hell? And uh, I'm like, what, what the hell? This note is, is, is completely fine. I mean, I, I got it from Western Union, I guess. So I, I, I highly doubt Western Union gives uh, um, fake notes. So I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a good one. And it's a recent one as well. So I'm like, what the hell? What's going on here? So she tells me, do you have another knot? I'm like, um, well, I don't have another $50 knot, but I have, oh, I can give you two times 20 and one, one, one net knot of 10, or I can give you $100. And she's like, I want the $100 knot. So then I understand why she complained. Bonjour. 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 So I give her the $100 note and she says, and she looks at it, she's like, okay, it's good. <laughs> and, she, and then, and then what's even more funny, she tells me actually, she tells me, well, you know, your note, your $50 note is, I mean, it's good. It's, it's most likely good, but I did not want, I did not want it at all. In, in Ethiopia because in, and in many places in Africa, they love $100 note, but because I guess they get better exchange rates with those notes. So basically the only thing they want is $100 note. So she just refused my $50 note because, because she wanted a $100 note. Anyway, I am through. I made it into the plane. Oh my God, what an adventure it was. So that's how I managed to exit Ethiopia without passports, with none of all the required documents to exit the country. And now I will have a last point to tell you because my problems are not finished yet. I am in France now, but I still have problems in France. So that will be my last point, getting a passport in France. It is very complicated. And to give you a hint on where I am, the guy who found this track, this trail, was called Mr. Martel. M-A-R-T-E-L. That should be a good hint to help you find where I am in France right now. you another hint on where am I in France I'm not sure but I think I am in the deepest canyon in Europe if you see I see the GoPro cannot even see the, the top and the bottom at the same time basically the top up there is probably 1500 meters high the river I am at 1000 meters high so I'm 500 meters below below the ridge and the river is probably two or three hundred meters uh, lower than me, maybe two hundred meters lower. So at least right here, the canyon is probably seven hundred meters deep. Yeah, look at that, guys. Uh, those cliffs are oh, so beautiful. I wish I was a climber just now. So last part, last part of the adventure to get back on the road after going through the nightmare of Ethiopian bureaucracy successfully. Now I have to go through the hell of French bureaucracy and it's not yet successful. Oh, I didn't look behind why it's so beautiful. Yeah. 
I went to, I got an appointment to apply for a new passport as quickly as possible. Very far from where, where I'm staying now. But uh, anyway, I didn't care. I just want to have it as fast as possible. So I applied for it. I asked for, because uh, in France now they have the big great traveler passport that has more pages. So I asked for that and they told me, no, you cannot have a great traveler's passport. You need a paper for that. You need a proof that you are a great traveler. And I'm like, what the hell? I mean, in the last 12 years, I've used four passports because I'm filling up my passports all the time. And you don't have a proof that I'm a great traveler. You surely have it in your database. But they're like, no, 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 no. You need a paper. If you don't have the paper, you cannot have it. What the hell? Wow. So no great traveler passport. Okay, it doesn't matter. I still apply for the passport. And, I, and they tell me it should take one month. So I'm like, wow, very happy. I thought it might take two or three months. They say one month, I'm very happy. And at this point, everything is fine. Then three weeks later, I get a call. And they call me and the, the woman who, who gets uh, my application says, actually, you had a passport that you did not give back. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I had another passport, but she gives me the number of the passport. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but this passport expired three years ago. That's why I did not give it back. Yeah, but they tell me, she tells me, uh, well, you have to give it back, actually. So they asked, they refused your application because you have to give it back. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Anyway, I lost three weeks, but in my timing, it was still okay. So I think, okay, doesn't matter. I should still be fine to, to go back uh, on, on time uh, in Ethiopia. Oh, there are some climbers up there. What the hell? That's completely nuts. They are in the middle of the cliff. Anyway, so to finish the story, I lost three weeks. And then, three weeks later, another call. And this time the woman tells me, well, you had this other passport, this number. And I'm like, what the hell? But this passport is not valid since 10 years. And... So then I get I get I get pissed actually because it's like it's like I'm, I I just get pissed because it's like why do you tell me every three weeks oh that there is this other passport I need to give back and come on can't you tell me everything at the same time and not make me wait three weeks every time to get every document I need to 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 to, to give me the list one by one every three weeks it's like what the hell so then I get really pissed I'm I'm like what the fuck are you joking or like you're kidding me I mean I can't spend all my life, all my time waiting for passport, for a passport to be to be done. And this last passport she was asking is actually a passport I renewed because it was full. So I renewed it in the French embassy in Mozambique. And and in the embassy actually they gave it to me, they stamped it cancelled and, and they cut the, the corner of the pages. And they told me oh, they, they told me they did not even tell me you have to, to give it back. They told me oh you can you will be able to keep your passport. Very good for you. And 10 years later, they tell me you have to give it back. It's like, what the hell? You give me one information and then, and then you change the information 10 years later and you bother me. You make me lose, lose my time. You, you, you forbid me to work. For, for, for what? Because you changed the rules in, in between? Well, I don't know. I started so, so I got pissed because I thought, okay, she should have told me before. Three weeks before, not, not one by one. She should have told me everything before. Hopla. Canyoning. 
Hey, too many people here. Yeah, so I got pissed. So once again, like in Ethiopia, I started shouting in the phone. It's like, are you you're really killing me? Anyway, I sent her the papers again. That's now six weeks lost. And then I sent an email complaining again, explaining that, I mean, I would have liked to have at least, I can't believe how disorganized the French government is. It's like, I, I, I just asked, hey, well, I would have liked to have the complete list of the documents I, I needed to, to get a French passport uh, before applying to the passport and not document by document every three weeks. Oh. Hey, it's canyoning season. Yeah, I added that my co their constant delays basically were threatening my uh, professional activity. Luckily, it seems that this email worked because then you can see online uh, where is your uh, application, what's at what stage is your application, and I saw that three days after the second phone call. Uh, they started the, the production, the, they started building my passport, so my application was finally accepted and, uh, and they finally started to, to produce the passport. But fuck, six weeks to get the application accepted. It's insane. In Portugal it takes two days to get the passport, to get the passport in hand. In France after six weeks, I just have the application accepted. What the hell? So that's, that's where I am now, basically. No, no passport yet. Six weeks lost because of uh, wrong information given to me by the, by the French government. Yeah, so I'm still waiting to get my passport. It's been almost two months where I applied for it. What the hell? At least I am in a beautiful place. Okay, guys. So I guess see you for the for the next adventures, hopefully back in Ethiopia, back in Arba Minch, where my bike is still. Ciao, guys. My camembert again. All melted, wonderful. <laughs> camembert.